Investigation Hour. The Circleville Letters. A tangled web of secrets, terror, cover-ups, revenge, and murder. A series of in-depth, terrorizing letters spread across a town like wildfire. Who was the mysterious letter writer? In 1976, in the small town of Circleville, Ohio, creepy letters started making their way into the townspeople's mailboxes. These letters were exposing secrets within this small town and contained personal details of each individual. Was it one person or a group of people sending out these letters? It is still unknown who the Circleville writer is. There was no return address on the marked letters, only that it was from Columbus, Ohio. Hmm, perhaps that's a clue? Thousands of letters were received by politicians, leaders, and ordinary folks in town as well. Many of these letters contained sexual-oriented accusations, and some very disturbing. This story starts off with Mary Gillespie, a local school bus driver. She first received a letter in cryptic, handwritten block lettering. The letter writer accused her of a love affair with the superintendent, Gordon Massey. Stay away from Massey. Don't lie when questioned about knowing him. I know where you live. I've been observing your house, and I know you have children. This is no joke. Please, take it serious. Everyone concerned? has been notified and everything will be over soon. Both denied any involvement together, as they were both married at the time. Mary swore to her husband, Ron, that these allegations were false. Two weeks had passed and Ron had received a similar letter stating, You have had two weeks and done nothing. You are a pig offender. You're also a pig. Make her admit the truth and inform the school board. If not, I will broadcast it on CBS. Posters, signs, billboards, until the truth comes out. Only pigs ride motorcycles. Good hunting in your red and white truck on your way to work. Remember, she hung in his office constantly until she broke up his marriage and home. Contact people at school. They're aware. They're starting to laugh, not only at her. Let her read this. It is no lie. He knows I'm telling no lie. I followed him for weeks since last summer and have seen her meet him several times. He knew if caught, there would be trouble. If they did not comply, he threatened to release this information to CBS News post it on billboards and posters all around town. Both Ron and Mary decided to keep these letters and alleged affair quiet and waited out. For some time, the letters stopped. Perhaps the letter writer was busy with its other targets? The letter writer went as far as posting signs around town accusing superintendent Gordon Massey of having sexual relations with the Gillespie's 12-year-old daughter. On August 19th, 1977, something dramatic occurred in the Gillespie home. Someone had called the household that day. Ron answered and suddenly left the house in a flurry, angry. It is believed that the phone call was from the letter writer and Ron left to confront him. Unfortunately, a tragic event occurs. Ron never made it to the letter writer, and he wouldn't make it back home either. For his truck would strike a tree and he would die on the scene. This may seem like an accident, but something seems off. He had his gun on his body at the time of the crash. Police say that his gun was fired at some time before the crash and some time after leaving his home. 
even stranger, the bullet was never found. So who did he fire his gun at? And where did he fire his gun? This death goes to show that this letter writer is capable of murder. Even with the strange inconsistencies of the crash, the sheriff ruled it out as an accident. He had first agreed there was indeed foul play. Then when confronted again, he changed his mind. Many townsfolk believed that this was a cover-up. This seemed to upset the letter writer. He or she wanted the town to know that this wasn't an accident. After her husband's death, the letters continued. Mary had begun a relationship with, you guessed it, Gordon Massey, and decided to be public about it. Things in the town had started changing, but the letters continued, and the letter writer continued to prove what he or she was capable of. On February 7th, 1983, while driving down her bus route, Mary had seen a sign posted to a pole that threatened her daughter's life. As she tore the sign down, she noticed an odd booby trap that contained a loaded gun to fire once the sign was removed. Luckily, the booby trap malfunctioned and Mary was safe. The police linked the gun to Paul Freshour, Mary's brother-in-law. Paul pleaded that the gun was lost years ago and that he was indeed innocent. After a letter writing test, police believed he was in fact the letter writer. Paul was convicted to seven to 25 years in prison for the attempt of murder of Mary. The story doesn't stop there. Paul received a letter from the Circleville writer while in prison. The letter wrote, Now when are you going to believe you aren't getting out of there? I told you two years ago, when we set them up, they stay set up. Don't you listen at all? No one wants you out. No one. The joke's on you. <laughs> Tell no one of this letter. Saw the paper. Great news. Great. Sheriff loved it. <laughs> Do you believe it now? Do you? This assured Paul that he would never be released from prison. Perhaps he knew the letter writer. And the letter writer threw him under the bus? The most interesting part to this story is that while Paul was in prison, the letters continued. The police even went as far as to admit Paul to solitary confinement for a time and restrict his writing materials to see if the letters would stop. The letters continued on, baffling investigators. The letters continued to pour in, and they were sickening, and they contained some very serious accusations. In one, the writer had accused Roger Klein, the prosecutor in Paul's case, of having gotten a school teacher pregnant and then killing her. The writer went as far as to threaten to dig up the body and mail the remains to police if he didn't admit to it. Another chilling letter called out Dr. Ray Carroll, the local coroner. The writer accused him of being a pedophile. And in fact, he was. The state medical board issued 12 counts of gross immortality, sex crimes involving minors, corruption of a minor, pornography, obscenity, and indecent exposure. Another insane person living in Circleville, Ohio was David Longberry. He is another possible suspect of being the Circleville letter writer. In 1999, he had raped an 11-year-old girl and was never caught. He is still on the run to this day. In May of 1994, Paul was granted parole and was released after spending 10 years in prison. After his release, he started a website proclaiming his innocence and accusing Sheriff Radcliffe of covering up the crimes. 
Was Paul an innocent victim of the letter writer? Or was he involved somehow? Theories. Some people believe that Mary Gillespie and Gordon Massey were responsible for the Circleville letters. Perhaps to kill her husband and be together? Was Sheriff Radcliffe in on it and helped them cover it up? Perhaps they had dirt on him and blackmailed him into helping them? Others believe the letters were written and distributed by a group of individuals in town. One suspect was Ron's sister. One other clue was a mysterious man in a yellow Camaro seen parked by the booby trap some time before Mary had ripped the sign off. Unfortunately, nothing has been confirmed. Thanks for listening. If you're into solved and unsolved crimes and strange mysteries, subscribe to us so you don't miss out on our weekly videos released every Monday at 2 p.m. Pacific time. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like. It would really help us out. Until next time.